Hey everyone, I wanted to quickly walk you through this small business accounting slash finance template that I put together for all of your bookkeeping needs, for tracking revenues and expenses, bank transactions, journal entries, and then just getting insights into how your business is performing. Built all this out into Google Sheets so you never have to leave Google Sheets, nor do you have to pay like a monthly subscription for this. If you're looking for a low effort, low touch solution and something that is more of a one-time low cost solution, then this is probably for you. So let me actually walk you through high level what, what's in each tab. So here you've got the analytics tab, which is a completely dynamic dashboard. So it's showing your month over month revenue, your expense uh, categorization breakdown, revenue by customer. Uh, if you owe any money um, to anyone, your account's payable. If you have any money owed to you, your account's have receivable balances. And then it is completely dynamic, so you can click into these filters and update as needed. If I wanted to see specific products, I could do that. And you can see the dashboard updates uh, accordingly. I'll just go ahead and click reset. And by doing that, it'll bring it back to the full fiscal year. The other stuff that you get in this template is the reporting tab. So you get a profit and loss statement, which is a month over month uh, statement, the cash flow statement, and then also the balance sheet statement. And so those are really the main two tabs from a reporting standpoint. And ultimately, that's what matter, matters when it comes to making business decisions. But the dashboards, and what you're looking at here is only as good as the data that goes in. So you still do need to populate quality data in order to get this output. And so that's what I'll walk you through next. This all starts on the setup tab here. I'll just zoom in a little bit here. So I've got a set of instructions here on the right hand side for how to go in and fill this out, but it's pretty straightforward. You just go in and anything that has a clear or white cell in it, you can just go in and populate that with your own data. So your company name, the currency that your business operates in and if you do select another currency, that does update throughout all of the other tabs. And then your current fiscal year, start, and then it'll automatically populate the end date accordingly, just 12 months out. And then what you do is go in and update any kind of bank accounts and credit cards that you have. So in this particular version, I've included up to two bank accounts, two credit cards. And if you don't track your transactions in your bank accounts or credit cards, that's totally fine. You can leave this blank. If you use a digital wallet like a PayPal or Venmo or Zelle, you can include those here as well. I just find that most of those digital wallets are ultimately tied to a bank account or credit card at the end of the day at, in terms of the funding source. That's why I just listed it as a bank account and credit card. If you do want to add additional cards, just email me and I can walk you through what that looks like. And I should mention, as you go through and fill out each step, you can actually just collapse the step that you're finished with. So then you're just seeing less, less information on the page. Step three, go in and update your revenue categories. This is going to be dependent on the type of business that you're in. So I've added a few here as an example. Then your expense categories, again, dependent on the business that you're in. Ultimately, this just comes down to reporting and how you want to track your expenses and categorize them. So it's really up to you. There are some categories, or I should say accounts, that I've specified to keep. So sales tax expense, for example, don't rename it or reorder it or change it around because it does carry over into the reporting tab and the analytics tab. So anywhere where the not making a change, I've made it clear. Even if you don't track expenses or sorry, track taxes just yet, I would still leave it in there just in case at a future time you do. But once again, you don't want to modify that as it will impact reporting and analytics. But yeah, basically what we're doing here is just filling out the chart of accounts ultimately. So once you're done with the revenue and expense categories, you can come in here and update your account balances, your asset categories, opening balances, opening date, your liability accounts. And then what it'll do is it will auto populate the opening balance based on assets minus liabilities. So it'll do that for you automatically. Now, if we scroll down to step six, if you do track customer information and you have recurring customers and you want to track data and analytics on revenue by customer, then you can go in and enter your customer list and customer information. If you don't, and you really typically just have one-off customers, then you probably don't need to go in and fill this out here. And then same thing with the payee account section. So if you have payees that you, or suppliers, I guess, that provide you with supplies or that you purchase from, you can enter that information here and track that accordingly. This becomes helpful like 
particularly with like accounts payable and then for customers with accounts receivable, especially if you have balances outstanding. And then the last section here in setup is updating your products and services. So once again, it is geared a little bit more towards service-based businesses or non-inventory businesses, but certainly if you do have physical products, you can very much so track them here, name, description, the amount, and then under billing method, if it's a physical product, I would just select fixed, but for any of the other service-based ones, you can select whether it's hourly, daily, or per person. If any of these products or services are taxed, you can just select taxable and then put in the particular tax rate. And then that tax rate will carry over to the other tabs. One thing I should mention for all of these is the status. So make sure that the status is set to active. Otherwise it will not appear as a selection in other tabs. The same goes for customers and payee accounts as well. Now that you've gone through the initial setup, you're ready to start like populating this spreadsheet with data. So you can click into the all sales tab and I'll just zoom out a little bit here. And this is where you'll go in and input your, your sales data. So here on the left-hand side, you can see a summary of your sales data and then your month over month sales performance in the middle. This is really where you'd go in and enter your actual data. And over on the right, you'll notice that there's this like itemized entry section. This is particularly useful if you want to itemize your entries or if you're like sending out an invoice or you just want to like group a bunch of line items together, you can use this little tool that I built out. So I'll show you how this works. I'll just clear out this selection here. You can go ahead and select a date. So I'll select a date in here. You can put in a description, a customer, a revenue category. So this carries over from the setup tab and an account that you expect to receive the funds in. And then this is where you can go in and itemize the entry. So you can go in and specify the particular product or service that you're billing. This again comes from the setup tab. So I'll just select a couple of these services, put in a quantity. And if you selected that this product or service was taxed, you'll see the tax amount comes across here in this little invoice form as well. Once you're done here, you can go ahead and click save. And then you'll see that this little prompt appears, add new entry. So you can just go ahead and click yes. And then it does take a couple of seconds, but once that runs, you will see that line item here up here on the very next line. And if at any time you forget, or you want to reference what was contained in that itemized entry, you can just click into this reference number search and then find that, that reference number and it'll pull up that particular entry and what was included. And of course you can do that for past itemized entries as well. So you don't just have to use it for itemized entries. You can still go in and add in your line items one by one. That's very much possible as well, but this just makes it easier if you wanted to group a bunch of transactions together. Now onto the expenses tab it works very similarly. And the layout is actually the exact same. So you can go in here and enter a line item one by one, or you can use the itemized entry tool on the right hand side. So again, I'll just click save here and show you how this works. Same thing, add new entry, click yes. And then that entry does take a couple of seconds once again, and then it will be loaded in here. One thing I should mention as well here that I didn't mention in the all sales tab, but works the same way is these three columns here. So whenever there's an itemized entry, it automatically checks off that this is an itemized entry. For, ex for the expenses, if you received, or sorry, if you paid this expense already, you can just select paid. And this is kind of like your manual tracker to say that you've paid for this expense. And if for whatever reason you, an, an entry became void or null, you can actually just select exclude. And you'll notice that it excludes that expense from the total amount here. So instead of deleting all these line items, you can just select exclude. So you can see that you actually did input it, but you just exclude it from the overall transaction. And then the sales tab works the exact same way as well from exclusion standpoint. And then also instead of tracking whether you paid for an item, in this case, you just select that you received payment for a particular item. Okay. So those are the sales and expense tabs. The next tab I'll go through is the bank accounts tab. So if you do want to just pretty much copy and paste in your transactions here, you totally can. So you just download your transactions, copy and paste them in here. My recommendation is to right click and copy paste special values only because that'll be the cleanest. And you can use tools like ChatGPT or Grok or any of those AI tools really to help you basically summarize your transactions in a format that 
will be compatible with this. But yeah, you can come in here and enter your specific line items, or again, like copy and paste them, them in. And, and once you do that and click categorize, it'll open up this section here to then go in and categorize your specific, your specific expenses as needed. So the same thing applies for the credit cards tab as well. You can go in and copy and paste your transactions in and then select whether you're going to categorize or match or exclude those transactions. And I should specify like when you select categorize, that means that transaction is going to get tracked to your PNL and your financial statements and analytics dashboards. But if you select a match, it's actually going to exclude that transaction because it's saying it's thinking that you're going to match that transaction with the sales tab or the expenses tab, or you can completely exclude that transaction altogether, especially if it's a personal transaction. But again, it works very similar to how the all sales and all expenses tab works. The reason I set this up is because different businesses have different ways of tracking transactions. Sometimes it's a mix of both like manual transactions, plus bank accounts, plus credit cards and digital wallets. Sometimes it's one or the other. So I just made a bunch of different options available for you, depending on how you track your transactions in your business. The last input tab that I'll go through is the journal entries tabs. This is where again, like if you don't have experience entering journal entries, then again, I'd use like an AI tool or speak to your accountant. But you shouldn't have to use the journal entries tab very much. Like all of your transactions in theory should be tracked in sales, expenses, or come across in your bank accounts or credit cards. But let's say there were things like you're drawing money out of the company and you wanted to track that as a journal entry, you could. Or maybe it's like a prepaid expense that you're drawing down or amortizing some equipment. That's what you could use the journal entries tab for. And what I built into the journal entries tab is this little tracker that shows where the total amounts are going, like to which particular account, like is it an asset account, a liabilities account, which uh, accounts are impacted and whether that entry makes sense and it's balanced. And if it doesn't, then what that discrepancy is. So to put this in perspective, we can put in an amount here for, let's say $5,000. And let's just say you were going to input a revenue transaction, even though you do that on the sales tab, you would typically go in here and say, okay, I'm going to receive this amount. So debit accounts receivable, and I would credit, let's say a revenue account. You can see that is balanced 5,000 assets, 5,000 revenue. That's all balanced. But let's say I accidentally selected the wrong account. Let's say another revenue account, right? Like you can see revenue that's not balanced. So there is a discrepancy in place. So it will track that kind of information, at least in, in this tab. So there are some rules that I've built in some simple rules, but still, I would still confirm either with an AI tool and they're pretty good these days with confirming journal entries and the validation over journal entries, or again, confirm with your accountant, but you shouldn't have to use the journal entries tab that much, but if you did need to, you could totally do that, do that here. So once you've got all of your data into these tabs. What you'll see is the profit and loss statement will populate automatically. And this is dynamic. So if you're not using an account, you'll notice that it will not appear here. And it will also track the profit and loss on a month over month basis. So you can see the revenue up top, the expenses up top, or sorry, at the bottom, and then the totals here on the left hand side. And if we scroll over to the middle, you'll see your cash flow statement specifically looking at your cash balance and your bank accounts. So just showing your opening balances, your inflows, your outflows, the net difference and current balance to date. And then this balance here should be the same balance as if we go over to the balance sheet should be the same balance as the bank accounts and cash together. So if we just look over here, you can see the bottom right 26 K and you can see here 26 K is the total. So that's your little check to make sure that this is all balanced and aligned. But uh, yeah, this is your balance sheet, essentially showing your financial health or financial position at a specific point in time. So you can see that all the opening balances from the setup tab are brought over here, total debits to these accounts, credits to these accounts, and then the current balance. And of course the retained earnings or net income dollar amount here comes from the profit and loss statement here. So everything kind of ties together. So you don't have to worry about manually making any kind of updates. And at, basically all you have to worry about is entering your data into the spreadsheet.
And then the final thing, which we looked at at the very beginning, and my favorite, to be honest, is this dynamic dashboard. So once again, it shows your month over month profit, shows your monthly revenue, your expenses breakdown, and where you're spending your most of your expenses. So you can see here software subscriptions, shows you your profit margin, a few more metrics on revenue by customer and revenue by product slash service. And then over on the right-hand side, any balances owing to you. So anytime you selected accounts receivable and you haven't actually collected on that amount, you'll see that appear here by customer sorted highest to lowest. And then any money that you owe to a supplier or vendor, or I should say payee, will appear here from highest to lowest. And once again, it is dynamic. So if you use any of these filters here, let's say I want to look at a particular account. Let's see just my credit card account. Then it'll show me just my data related to that credit card account. Anytime it's showing like expense related data, it's not going to show the revenue side. And then anytime it's just revenue, it's not going to show the expense side of things. That's why you're seeing some of these not applicables appear. Just like here, if I were to select a customer, you'll see it's more revenue based, not expense based data that appears here. That's pretty much it here for this, this template. I hope you found this useful. Again, this is everything that's built out here in Google Sheets at a high level. And it should be enough to help you make business decisions as part of your business.